That's right, I've caught a shiny Frillish, and with its help, I'm going to tell you how to use Dexnav to catch shiny Pokemon of your own. Dexnaving is a particularly good way to find and catch a specific shiny Pokemon, because you can easily control which Pokemon you're about to encounter, rather than it being randomly generated when you enter an encounter. First, choose the Pokemon you want. Go to a route that the Pokemon appears and catch the normal version of that Pokemon. You can't deck snap for a Pokemon that isn't registered in your Pokedex as caught, so catch a normal version of one first. Then, get yourself prepared. Having a full team of high-level Pokemon with lots of PP moves is very useful. Not necessary, as you can use PP restoring power from your O powers if you need to. If you can have these Pokemon be strong against your target, it will also really help. Of course, breaking your chain isn't a big deal, but it ends up being a lot faster for you. You also need repels. Lots of repels. If you have money to burn, and another DS that can give you bargain power, you can uh, buy a few hundred max repels. But if you only can afford 20 super repels, you're not out of luck. Just save right before you turn on the repel, and soft reset after you've used them all. So thrifty! Finally, you're ready to begin. Before you can find any Pokemon with Dexnav, you need to have walked 100 steps since the last time you started a Dexnav. It can be really tough to encounter in the water, so just surf around in circles for a moment and then you're good. Don't forget to turn on your repel. Now pick a spot. Corners are easiest, but any point you can reliably go back to over and over again will work. After every encounter, before you search for the next Pokemon, you're going to return here. This will help keep the Pokemon from leading you to an area that's hard to navigate around. When you hit the search, you will see the Pokemon appear on the map. You have to sneak to it, but do it quickly. To sneak, push the circle pad part way, not all the way to the edge. The moment the circle pad goes all the way, your character walks or swims normally. You can scare away the Pokemon this way. Take a moment to get used to how far you can push your circle pad and get used to it. You can never sneak with the D-pad. Advanced Dexnav users can also dash when they are only fewer than two squares, including diagonals, left to reach the Pokemon. This is really difficult, but can be worth it if you're just about to reach a uh, water-type Pokemon and it's disappearing. You also have a split second after the water stops rippling where you can still encounter a Pokemon in the water. Don't stop just because the Pokemon disappeared. Once you've encountered a Pokemon, you're halfway there. There's still some debate about exactly what the odds are, but as far as people can tell, Ducksnav Encounter has about a 1 in 512 chance of getting a shiny Pokemon. Long chains or even the shiny charm don't seem to make a real difference. It's one of the highest odd ways of catching a shiny Pokemon. Once you have the Pokemon in front of you, if it's not shiny, faint it. Then return to the spot you chose earlier and press search again. You will notice the Pokemon appears in about the same spot as before. This is because no matter what you hunt or where, each Pokemon only has a few distinct locations it appears. In the grass, the Pokemon stays put once it appears, so long as you don't scare it off or take too long to get to it. But Pokemon in, in, the ca in water and in caves move around. Fortunately, they always appear in the same squares. Pokemon always move in predictable patterns as well, once you get used to them. You'll get a feel for each Pokemon that you're going to hunt for, as long as you return to that same spot that you started. In the water, most Pokemon will move around twice and then create an empty whirlpool uh, where they don't appear. In caves, they, m they just move around. Keeping a chain going is hard. Fortunately, if you're using the Dexnav to get a shiny Pokemon, you don't need long, chain, uh, long chains in order to get this to happen, as the odds of getting a shiny Pokemon are roughly the same whether you've encountered one or 100. <coughs> long chains are the only, only important if you're trying to catch strong Pokemon. The longer the chain, the better the IVs, the moves, and levels of the chained Pokemon you'll have, and the better odds of them carrying rare items. On the water in caves, longer chains also mean for faster moving Pokemon. Especially when you start out, I recommend deliberately breaking your chain by running on every fourth encounter. Get used to how the Pokemon moves at a slow speed before you worry about longer chains. 
While you're deck snapping, don't get discouraged if another Pokemon deck snap onto you. Just run at it and scare it off. Then go and restart your chain. It can take a long time to catch a Pokemon in the water or cave, so don't get stressed out when it takes a lot of time. Here are some specific tips for Frillish, uh, for Frillish if you'd like to uh, catch this beautiful Pokemon as well. For Frillish, I find that it regularly went counterclockwise from where it started. If it happened to be on or close, to, if I happened to be on or close to a spawn spot, it would appear somewhere far away, and I would have to rush. Contrary to what I had thought into going into this specific hunt, it is possible to encounter this Pokemon on any route, even though most videos suggest only hunting it by Mount Pyre. Thank you so much for listening to this tutorial. I am Professor Punko! Holy yes! <laughs> Way too happy for a shiny frillish! Ah! <laughs> Spooktober! Oh my god. Oh my god. Ah! Ah! Professor Punko here. And as you saw on the screen that the for the baby boy shiny frillish i knew that as it came on the screen i am so happy if you could not tell by the scream oh my god you are a beautiful magical creature a beautiful magical creature and with a critical capture oh my god i did it only two more roots to go or, oh sorry only three more fish rooting chaining to go oh my god and the best thing is is i was able to do this all live from beginning to end of getting this pokemon that is amazing so i'm going to show you the whole thing and do my own little deck snap tutorial which you'll already know because i'll be voiceovering the first part oh my god um i don't have a name for him oh but i will come up with one. Oh my god i just Oh my god, I should totally call him So Jelly. So Jelly. Because, oh, I bet you're so jelly I got him. Ha ha ha. Oh my god, I'm just gonna, I'm saving twice. That's how excited I am. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. Okay, guys. I did it. Alright, so that was my shiny for Route 124. Now I just have to do it for... Oh, for all the other water routes, but really it wasn't that bad once I once I, I spent uh, long enough actually doing it and like figuring out this Pokemon because that that was the thing was figuring out this Frillish. Um, he always goes counterclockwise um, after he um, after he appears, and as I said, I'll I'll have a little bit of tutorial at the beginning of this video, but I just want to see him. He is a careful nature. Oh my god, he's beautiful. Acid Armor, Recover, Water Pulse, and uh, um, Ominous Wind. Oh my gosh. I, I, He is beautiful. He is perfect. He is so jelly. Oh my god. Let's go. Like, we're naming him. We're naming him so jelly. Oh, I am so happy. I'm so happy that he came in Spooktober. I'm happy that I figured out how to do this. I, I'm just... Uh, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm so excited. Now, I'm going to uh, go to where the name raider is, because we need to name him So Jelly. Um, ah! It's like, yes, if you could not tell by my reaction. Uh, I almost, I almost want to, like, do, do something else, just, like, in the interim, just to make sure that I, that I have a break from these, but I am going to continue, I am going to continue. Let's, uh, let's get him let's get him named all right uh, okay so we got to get a stylus here because it's always easier hmm frillish isn't it i didn't pick that name that is his name you silly name raider okay so jelly uh where there is Because we're so jelly. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Okay, let's go see just so jelly shine. Let's go see it. Oh my god, my route quest is amazing. Shiny route quest, number bajillion. 
I think I need 10 more Pokemon to complete the shiny rock quest. Oh. So we have a regular electric. And we have So Jelly, our shiny male frillish. Oh my god. You are beautiful and perfect. Oh, you are everything I wanted you to be. And so much more. All right, well, I would like to, I'm also going to take a look at this in the center. I want to see him from every angle I possibly can. Uh, I'm just, I am like, ah, yes, yes. And it, like, I'm really glad it was live. I'm really glad that you guys can actually see from beginning to end. Like, I've been meaning to do some kind of Jackson F tutorial for quite a while now. So it, it's really nice to be able to share that with you. Um, as you guys all know, I, uh, I took on the... Um, or I decided to get the shiny charm in this game. You know that if you watched my Elgin video. So this is actually uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool. So there is a female frillish, a male frillish, and a shiny male frillish. So it's uh, such a tiny little difference in the two, but like you know, you just know when it when it happens. It is amazing. Oh wow, so I actually encountered this particular Pokemon, 333 Ducksnavs, so it was it was more the fact that it took a lot of, um, that it took an awful lot of, uh, mac like, m repels, but that's okay, you buy them with bargain power level 3, and they barely cost anything. So, thank you very much for watching, uh, happy Spooktober! Um, this is uh, ghost number three for me. Um, I'll be continuing to do this all month. I hope all of your Pokemon shine.